What's up, everybody? Hockey Time here, back for another set of power rankings. Apologize for having these up a little bit late. I had a work trip and didn't bring all my regular stuff with me to record and edit. So uh, recording this on Sunday after all the Saturday videos, all of the Saturday games are applied to this list. Um, and then hopefully next Friday we'll be back to the typical Friday to Friday schedule. Um, that all being said, number 32, the same team that was number two last week, we do have the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks, uh, frankly, can't seem to find the back of the net can't keep the puck out of the back of their own net. It's generally just pretty tough scenes for the Sharks. Um, Blackwood, who looked pretty good for through his first couple games, has started to struggle again. Um, Kapanen has been struggling really since the start of the year, and they, I think, had eight goals on the season. So all in all, like everything's tough for the Sharks right now. Hopefully they can at least get one win to start getting some momentum on the right side of the tracks here. But um, generally just pretty tough so far for the Sharks. And if you're a Sharks fan, it's probably tough to watch all of these games. Number 31 moving up no spots from last week is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, the Blue Jackets have been kind of on and off one game. They play really well. For example, that game against the Wild where they doubled the Wild shots. The only reason the game was really close is because Elvis couldn't stop a beach ball. Um, then they have games like last night against the Islanders where they don't really generate anything. Their big guys are pretty much invisible and they lose 2 nothing. So, um, frankly, I would have had the Blue Jackets probably higher on the list if it weren't for that loss last night to the Islanders. But um, they need to just find some consistency before I'm comfortable moving them up, despite the fact that they're, I think, 22nd or 23rd in the overall league standings. Um, but again, power ranking standings, totally different things, at least in my eyes. Number 30 is the Seattle Kraken. Um, still really bearish on this team. They finally found some ways to score, but generally they haven't looked all that great. I mean, their loss to Florida last night was kind of a tough one off of just an unlucky bounce. Um, Joey Decord going out to play the puck, and then it, it doesn't work out in his favor. But um, frankly, Decord's been the better of the two goalies for them so far. Grubauer struggled a good bit, um, and they still aren't really scoring in a clip that's going to win them a lot of hockey games. They need some of their bigger guys, you know, Jaden Schwartz, Matty Beniers, uh, Jared McCann, to like really pick things up if this team's going to be successful. Um, and so far, that just hasn't been the case. At number 29, dropping four spots, is the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, they do get a big win over Vegas this week in overtime, uh, but they also lost to Vegas. Um, and frankly, again, similar struggles to Columbus and Seattle. They have some games where they look good. They have some games where they look really bad. Um, and frankly, one of their biggest issues is just they're giving up a ton of shot quantity, and eventually that's going to wear on both their goalies. I mean, Arvid Soderblom's a pretty young guy. Peter Mrazek, I think, is on the wrong side of 30 um, and you know, hasn't shown that he's really got the numbers to be a true NHL starter. Um, and I don't know that Soderblom's ready for that responsibility yet, especially on a team that's going to be giving up 35, 40 plus shots a game. So um, the Blackhawks, I think are going to figure it out a little bit, but again, um, this is kind of where I expect them to be on this list for the majority of the year. But for now I do have them 29. At 28, moving up two spots from last week is the Washington Capitals. Um, solid games against both Jersey and Minnesota to wrap the week up. Um, again, I was at that Devils game. For those of you that watch my TikTok, they had a fantastic first period and then a haunting second period, which almost threw the game away for them. Um, and then in Minnesota, it was pretty much a tight game. They were kind of the beneficiary of Darcy Kemper standing on his head, especially in the shootout. Uh, I think it went eight rounds. And only one goal got scored between the two teams. So the Caps are starting to find a little bit of footing. Um, they need to keep it going, though, if they want to get anywhere on the season. Um, Ovechkin finally found the back of the net, which is good. He's got a couple goals called back, which sucks. But um, if this team can continue to, you know, find their offense, work with what they have, they don't need to play as a fast team. They're not a fast team. They need to use their size and strength um, to really just kind of outmuscle teams around the ice. That's the one thing that they have an advantage over a lot of teams, and I think um, so. They need to use that to their advantage. If they can continue to do that, they will probably climb this list a good bit. Um, but for now, I just need to see more of it out of them. Uh, number 27, dropping 12 spots, by far the biggest drop on this list, is the Edmonton Oilers. Um, frankly, this team is just a mess right now. I mean, as I'm recording this, the Heritage Classic's in about seven hours, so one of the two Alberta teams is going to come away with a win there, which is going to be huge for either of them. Um, but their goaltending has just not been it to this point in the season. Um, both Skinner and Campbell have struggled pretty mightily. Um... Campbell especially has games where, you know, he makes some miraculous saves and then the goals that go in are like, really, like that's the one you let in. So uh, they got to figure out something. I don't know if they're going to look to make an acquisition in the trade market, look to free agency. I don't really think there's a lot of help there that's going to be a game changer for them. Um, but nonetheless, they have to figure something out. And then, of course, the other day they play a pretty good defensive and goaltending game against the Rangers. 
and they get shut out obviously without McDavid in that one. So um, really, it seems like when something's going right, the other two things are going wrong for the Oilers. So um, I do expect them to start figuring things out, hopefully in short order here. But if this trend continues, it is going to be really, really troublesome for Oilers fans who had, you know, Stanley Cup aspirations heading into this season. Number 26 is the other Alberta team, the Calgary Flames. They dropped seven spots from last week's ranking. Um, similar struggle, struggles. Um, they really have not been able to find the, the back of the net to this point in the season. Their big guys, Huberto, Lindholm, Kadri, etc., have really all been struggling. Markstrom has been iffy. Dan Vladar has also been pretty iffy. Um, I've been preaching it all over the place. I think it's time to call up Dustin Wolf. I know you know markstrom's been their guy for the last few years you expect him to kind of be able to figure things out but a lot of the issues that were expect to be solved by bringing in the new head coach getting rid of daryl sutter um just they've stayed in place over the last you know eight games or whatever calgary's played to this point um you know if they they still aren't scoring their depth guys are really leading the charge in a lot of cases here. They need guys like Huberto and Lindholm to to be the X factors, and it's just not happening to this point. So, again, big game today between these two Alberta teams. One of them's got to win, so uh, that'll be good for whichever of those two fan bases it may be. Um, but either of these teams need to find a way to take the win tonight if they get it and keep that momentum rolling because otherwise it's going to be looking really, really tough as we're already into November pretty much. So, um these conversations around, you know, statistically who makes playoffs and who doesn't in November, um, they start coming at you pretty quick here. Number 26, or excuse me, number 25, moving up one spot from last week is the Nashville Predators. Um, a couple of good games by the Preds this week. I mean, again, they are going to struggle to score throughout the year. I think that's kind of proven itself at this point. Um, Saros has been great, a great game yesterday against the Leafs. Um, this is it's so weird seeing Nashville this low, but this is kind of where I expected them to be for a good chunk of the year. Um, I just don't think they have what it takes offensively to keep up with a lot of these teams. And again, to this point in the season, that showed quite a bit. Um, I am a bit concerned about UC Saros's longevity this year. He's played a lot of hockey already. Um, and if this team has any you know, hopes of pushing for a playoff spot and making it into the playoffs and making a run once they get there, they're going to need to have uh, some legs left on UC Saros, and if they keep this up, he's not going to have any. So we'll see if they can manage his workload, get um, Kevin Lankin in, into a few more games, maybe Yaroslav Askarov into a few games, but we'll see if they kind of change pace on that because right now UC Saros is playing a lot of hockey to start the year. Number 24, moving up four spots this week, is the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, again, the Ducks have just been pesky. They they fend off a, a obviously very good Bruins team earlier in the week. Um, and then yesterday, just dismantled Philadelphia, who, you know, they kind of contradicted my point I made the other week where I said I don't expect the Flyers to get blown out in a lot of games. Well, it wasn't necessarily a blowout. I believe a 7-4 final, but it, it's not a pretty game if you're a Flyers fan there. Um some of their their middle six guys have been fantastic. I mean, Frank Vetrano, I think, is now second in, in league goal scoring. Uh, Ryan Strom has been great. Trevor Zegers finally got on the board. McTavish got the overtime winner against Boston the other day. Um, and Lucas DeStall has quietly been fantastic for this team, too. I don't think his statistics were great against the Flyers yesterday, but I think going into that game, he was 10th in league save percentage and 9th in goals against or something along those lines. He's been fantastic for them so far. Um, if that continues and Gibson continues to have the numbers he's had to this point, I expect this to transition into kind of a 1A, 1B role for those two guys in net. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, I, again, no expectations for the Ducks to make the playoffs, but I think if this team can continue to be, um, you know, hungry, be pesky in every game they play, they're going to remain competitive. They have some of the talent there to be competitive. Um, they just have to kind of put the pieces together and keep it going. But to this point, they've been um, surprisingly good for me. At number 23, also moving up four spots, is the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, they're up to like 5-2-1 and one or something on the season. They've also been very good, competitive in every game they play, um, even some of their losses. For example, their opening season opening loss against the Leafs, it was a, I believe, 6-5 overtime or shootout loss. Like, this team is in every single game. Um, the main reason for that has been Jake Allen, who has come out of nowhere and just become like a top five goalie in the league i mean he stopped i think 42 of 45 shots in their game yesterday like just unbelievable numbers um and they have a lot of the guys that they need to show up showing up in big ways unlike 
teams like Calgary and Edmonton. Um, Cole Caulfield's got like five overtime <laughs> goals already. It seems like they're a lock to win every time a game goes to OT for them, aside from, of course, that Toronto game, because um, he's just fine in the back of the net, frankly, and a lot of their depth guys have been doing pretty good. Slavkovsky has been, his numbers aren't there, but if you watch the games again, back to the eye test, he looks much better than he did last year. He looks a lot more comfortable. Um, so we'll see if Montreal can keep this up. I think as of now, they sit second or third in the Atlantic division. Um, I'd be baffled if they can find their way into the playoffs, but to this point, they've been playing some really fantastic hockey, frankly. Number 22, moving up one spot is the St. Louis Blues. Um, the Blues, again, still struggling to find the back in the net, but Bennington has been great. Uh, Joel Hofer had a really good game the other night, too, so a good bounce back from the tough game he had to start his season personally. I don't really have too much on the Blues. I think this is kind of going to be their story for most of the year. Um, Thomas and Kyrie are going to really have to carry the load. Um, it'd be nice if they could get some some extra push from guys like Jake Vrana, who they picked up as kind of you know reclamation projects in the offseason. Um, we'll see what the Blues can do. I mean, they're... Much like Montreal, much like the Ducks, less talented than I think a lot of other teams in the league that have playoff expectations, but um, they're kind of one of those teams that if they battle through every game and they get good goaltending, which to this point they have been, they're going to be okay. So for now, I have them in this third row. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they move up, though, considering the way they've been playing to this point. Number 21, moving up one spot as well, is the Arizona Coyotes. Um Bit of a tough week for them, despite the fact that they move up. They had a 4-1 lead against the Kings in the first period, and the Kings, you know, kind of slowly dug away at that lead, and they ended up winning the game 5-4. Um, so games like that are tough, but again, I think I mentioned it in my recap video. That's that's the difference between teams that expect to be in the playoffs now and a team that expects to be in the playoffs maybe a year or two from now. Um, you know, the Coyotes got a lot of young kids on the team, essentially, um, and those games can be hard to finish off when you have a team that's got a lot of vets, um, has been there before and, you know, not often that we see Arizona with a 4-1 lead after a first period. So um, I'm not too, too worried about them. Again, they, much like these previous three teams, have been competitive in all their games. They're getting scoring from a lot of their big guys. Keller has looked fantastic so far this year. Schmaltz as well. Um, if those two especially can keep things up, I think this team's going to be okay. Number 20, moving or excuse me, dropping two spots is the New York Islanders. Um, despite their win yesterday against Columbus, they've been struggling again. The same troubles they've had really the last couple seasons. Their scoring's not there, and their goaltending's been trying to bail them out of games. Problem for that has been that Sorokin had a shaky last 10 or so days. Um, Varlamov actually was the one that got the shutout in last night's game against Columbus. So um, that's really the, the main thing that hinges on their success is Sorokin and Varlamov, if the two of them play well, they'll find ways to win games just through their systems. If they're not playing well, they're going to lose games because they don't score a lot of goals. So for now, I do have them at 20th, and we'll see if Sorokin can kind of rebound into form that we expect from him. Number 19, dropping two spots as well as the Buffalo Sabres. Um, the Sabres have started to get things rolling for their bigger guys for Tuck, for Thompson, but it seems like when one guy heats up, someone else kind of slows down. Um, and now, of course, Eric Comrie goes down with an injury. We don't really know how long he's going to be out. That means both him and Levi are injured at this time. So at least for the time being, I don't think Devin Levi's injury is too um, significant. But nonetheless, it is UPL's net for the time being. So it's an opportunity for him to prove that he should be the starting goalie again, despite Devin Levi's success this year. I think the cage is kind of open for all three of them. Um, they just got to earn it. So we'll see if UPL can do that he was okay in the devil's game uh on friday but again we just need to see some more consistency out of him that was his biggest issue last year he'd have games where he looked like a world ender and then some games where he looked more like a, a backup or an ahl goalie so we'll see if he can find some consistency while he has the opportunity to uh number 18 moving up six spots again another team that's been gritty competitive in every game is the philadelphia flyers um They've been getting fantastic goaltending from Carter Hart. They've been getting scoring from guys like Travis Konechny. Um, John Tortorella really is just doing what John Tortorella does as a coach. I mean, he finds ways to get these teams that, frankly, don't have the same talent as a lot of teams they're playing and keeps them in games. Um, the Flyers could probably be higher on this list if it weren't for that loss to the Ducks yesterday. Um, but again, they've been good against every team they played. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, I mean, just... Put, for example, those two wins the other week against Edmonton and uh, Vancouver. 
those are two teams that we expect to be pretty good. Philadelphia says, not so fast. This is our barn. We're going to take away the two points. So we'll see if Philly can keep it up. Uh, they've been fun to watch to this point. I'm kind of hoping they can. Uh, but again, we'll see if, you know, this is a true long game for them. It's tough. You know, 82 games, it's a long season. We're about seven games in so far. So if they can keep it up, they're going to climb. Uh, but for now, I do have them at 18th, up six spots from last week. Number 17, dropping nine spots from their previous ranking. This was, I believe, the second biggest fall off was the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, the Penguins had an okay start, obviously, but then this last week they've just struggled pretty mightily. I mean, Jari has not looked as good as he did in week one. The scoring has slowed down quite a bit. Eric Carlson still seeming to struggle to kind of find his fit on this team, which is kind of to be expected. Again, it's a similar situation to when he was on the Sharks with Brett Burns. You kind of have two 1A right-handed defensemen, and they're trying to navigate those waters. I think he is now single-handedly running the power play one unit, so we'll see if that helps with Latang moved off of that. Not great for my fantasy team, but oh well. Um, but yeah, I mean, they they really need to just kind of heat back up. Um, Nadelkovic went down with an injury, so hopefully Jari doesn't continue to struggle. Uh, I believe Marcus Helberg's their third stringer. He came in last night in relief of Jari, who gave up three goals on nine shots. So that really can't happen if you're a Penguins fan, right? Um, nonetheless, we'll see if they can find their footing again. I expect this team to be fine, um, but just a rough, again, end of last week and then a rough week entirely this week. We'll see if they can rebound moving forward. Number 16, dropping four spots, is the Minnesota Wild. Um, this team is kind of having goaltending issues to start the year. I mean, both Flurry and Gustafson have these games where they look great, and then the following game, they don't look great. I don't know if Dean Evison needs to just flip goalies as soon as one has a good game and hope the other one has a good game as well. Um, but it seems like neither of them can go two games in a row playing well. I mean, Gustafson, uh, I forget who it was they played earlier in the week, but he pitched like a 40-plus save win. And then he goes in in his next game and has kind of a stinker, I think gives up four or five goals on like 20-some shots. So that's the kind of consistency you want to see out of maybe an AHL goalie or an NHL backup. You need better numbers from your starter here. Um, they've had some injuries too, again, so I'm not expecting this team to drop by any means. I think they're short Boldy and Jared Spurgeon still. Obviously, those are two huge guys for them. So I'm um, not too worried about them moving forward, but their goaltending and the injuries have kind of bitten them a little bit. We'll see if they can rebound moving forward at number 15 moving up six spots is the winnipeg jets uh kind of rebounded from their tough week to start the year and they've looked much better connor hellebuck had a couple of games this week where he just single-handedly stole the show which is what you expect if you're a winnipeg jets fan which is again hard to maintain maybe for hellebuck but he's proven that he can do it in the past and he's done it the last couple of games so um that being said i've got them 15 i really don't have too much else to say for this team um Maybe you want a little bit more from guys like Connor and Shifley. They've been good so far, but you're kind of going to need them to be great if they want to make the playoffs in a tough uh, Western Conference in general, but especially the Central Division where things are kind of wide open. Um, we'll see if they can keep it up. Laurent Brassois does need to take some games off Hellebuck, similar to the UC Soros situation. Uh, if he's playing 60, 65 games on the year, it's going to be hard for them. If they do make it to the playoffs, to get very far just because Hellebuck's going to be burnt out. But um, hard to not put the guy in the net when he's putting up 35, 40 plus save wins. At number 14, dropping three spots is the Ottawa Senators. Uh, this team's been back and forth. I think they're up to four and four after the game yesterday against Pittsburgh. Um, frankly, they need to find a bit of consistency just all around. Um, much like uh, Philip Gustafson, the team in general just has one good game and then one bad game. So if they can find consistency, um, both in the net for them and then as well as the rest of the team. Um, Jonas Corposalo, I think, for the first time this year, played back-to-back -back games this week, and he was really good, especially in the second one yesterday against Pittsburgh. Um, they kind of need him to be the guy. I know Anton Forsberg's more than capable, but you're paying Corposalo $5 million not to be your 1B. You need him to be the guy for this team. So we'll see if he can take the couple good games he's had this week and kind of roll that along um, and continue that momentum. Uh, and if that's the case, this team's going to be fine. I don't really have any concerns for them to this point, at least. Uh, number 13, moving up three spots, is the LA Kings. Um, Phoenix Copley really con continues to struggle for this team. I, I think at this point, it's pretty clear that Talbot is the, you know, 1A, if you want to call this a 1A, 1B situation, and that Copley obviously is the 1B. Uh, but this team can score, man. I mean, they have proven that the Pierre-Luc Dubois deal was 
a good choice for them. They're not struggling to find the back of the net whatsoever. They just need to keep the puck out of their own net. Um, Drew Doughty found the fountain of youth this week. He had three goals, uh, two game winners, I think. So he's been on an absolute tear so far. Uh, again, I don't have a lot of concerns about the Kings as long as Cam Talbot stays healthy. If they have to go to a tandem of Phoenix Copley and Dave Riddick, I'm a little bit concerned. But until that happens, not worried about the Kings whatsoever. Number 12, dropping two spots, is the Detroit Red Wings. Um, both the Wings and Senators, I think, had probably overly hot week once, and they've kind of come back to earth a bit. Um, not that the Red Wings still aren't playing well, but, you know, they were scoring and not allowing goals at a pace that was, like, almost president's trophy like again super early in the season that's going to happen for some of these middle of the pack and even bottom of the pack teams looking back at you philadelphia um but for now i have them 12 i think some of the stuff that they've done so far is sustainable um alex to scoring at like an 80 goal pace maybe not so much but this team has shown a lot of cohesion early on billy huso has been good james reimer has been great as the backup to this point i do feel a bit for alex lyon who kind of pushed florida to the the playoffs last year and really hasn't gotten a shot to this point and if james reimer continues to play this way unless there's an injury i don't know when that situation is going to happen for him but uh nonetheless if detroit can continue this you know style of play they had in the first three or four games and then couple it with just some consistency and some some themes that we can move forward throughout the season and not just in short bursts of you know seven or eight games they're going to be all right i am a little bit concerned about their defense holding up they were really really you know just like godly in their first couple games they've come back to earth a little bit over the last few um they just need to find that middle ground and this team's going to be fine uh at number 11 moving up three spots is the florida panthers uh goalie bob was fantastic yesterday at least um he needs to be consistent again to move this team along earlier in the week they had the benefit of playing san jose which to this point in the season has looked like a free win and anthony stolars was pretty good in that game which is good to see because again you don't want to ride bob into the ground in the regular season and then have no legs left in the playoffs um makachuk finally broke the ice and got his first yesterday Got some good news that it sounds like both Brandon Montour and Aaron Eckblad are going to be back much earlier than expected. So really all good things here for the Florida Panthers. Expect them to continue to drive their way up the division standings and find their way nuzzled into a playoff spot as we move along here. Um, yeah, the Panthers have been pretty solid. Our biggest jump this week, moving up 10 spots, is the Vancouver Canucks. Um, this team, after a couple tough losses to end last week, has been lights out. Um, I mean, they looked fantastic against St. Louis. Um, frankly, I think they deserve to win against the Rangers. If it weren't for some penalty trouble, they probably would have come away with that win. Uh, both Demko and DeSmith have been unbelievable. Guys like JT Miller, Elise Pettersson, again, Phil giuseppe has been great. Um, Brock Besser, again, I don't expect him to score at a, a goal per game pace, but he's been fantastic for them. They've all been good. And then the blue line has really seem to shore up quite a bit i mean even the games where they're not getting a ton of shots they're not allowing crazy numbers there's been a couple of games where demko's had to stand on his head um notably that philly game a couple of weeks ago was a tough one but um i like what i've seen from this team i don't know if i expect it to continue just because it's the vancouver canucks they kind of have a reputation at this point much like the leafs do in the playoffs um but if they can continue this they're going to end up you know, pretty high in the Pacific standings, assuming, you know, Edmonton and Calgary continue to struggle. Um, the only thing I really have concerns about is, you know, you want to keep your goalies relatively fresh. Keeping the shot volume down is going to be important for this team. But um, unlike previous years, Demko seems to have a pretty solid backup behind him, which is comforting both for him and for the team. So all good things from the Canucks at this point. We'll see if they can continue moving up the list or if this is kind of where they where they settle down uh number nine up four spots is the tampa bay lightning um all the concerns i had about jonas johansson last week seem to be long gone uh he's been fantastic this week he posted back-to-back -back shutouts i think he's up to like a 923 save percentage on the year i don't know if you know tampa's scouting department had kind of seen this potential in him and that's why they went with him as the backup and didn't choose to make a move when they found out vasilevsky was injured but if he can keep this up um Tampa's not going to miss a beat, which is both frustrating and terrifying as someone who is not a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. Um, but yeah, I mean, they their big guys have been scoring as needed. Their middle six guys that, you know, there was some concern about their depth coming in and replacing the guys like Kalorn and Palat from two years ago and these guys that have helped them win Stanley Cups. It 
they haven't missed a beat. Uh, Nick Paul has been great. Um, Alex Barry Boulay has been great. Really no complaints for the Lightning. I'd probably expect them to move up, assuming this past week from Johansson wasn't a fluke. But at this point, we're probably about four, maybe five weeks away from Vasilevsky coming back. So, um, again, they just need to be middle of the road until he comes back, and then they're probably going to be fine. But if they get this goaltending from Johansson, they're going to be well above middle of the road. So uh, that's the story for the Lightning for now. At number eight, moving up a spot, is the New York Rangers. Um Shesterkin continues to struggle a bit, which is kind of concerning. Uh, statistically, he wasn't great in the Canucks game, but um, I got to watch pretty much all of that game. He looked fine. None of the goals were really on him. Uh, and had a marvelous save in the overtime to keep things knotted uh, against the Canucks at the end of the game there. So I expect him to rebound. He's going to be fine. Uh, surprisingly, Quick's been pretty good in the games he's played so far. Um, I don't know if that's just a you know flash in a pan or if that's what we should expect from him all year, but uh, it looks at least for the time being like Shesterkin's got a good backup behind him. And then the guys that you expect to be good have been good for them. Zibanejad had a great game yesterday. Panarin's heated up pretty well this past week. Chris Kreider's got a couple goals on the season already, and then their group of defensemen has been what you expect. Um, so that's pretty much it for the Rangers. They're about where I expected them to be. Um, and if... You know, if Shuster can, can rebound, they're going to go even higher. Um, number seven, dropping three spots. This has been a very interesting team, the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, and they finally got a bit of consistency in net, but for a while there, it was like just giving up woefully poor amounts of goals. Um, I mean, all three of their goalies have gotten touches now in the year, um, largely due to injury to Anderson. But um, I'm hoping now that that kind of chaos is come and gone hopefully um they're gonna kind of settle things down they're still scoring at a really good pace um they just need to solve things defensively which it seems like at the end of the week they started to do but for a while there you know end of last week beginning of this week it was kind of scary scenes of your hurricanes fan but hopefully they've settled things down they're going to continue to do what they do under rod brindamore system and they should fingers crossed be all right Number six, moving up one spot, is the New Jersey Devils. Um, they do lose that game to Washington on Wednesday, which was kind of a tough loss. They frankly just came out way too slow. Uh, but then they come back and get a solid win against the Sabres. Um, they won their game earlier in the week as well. So the Devils are kind of finding their footing. They had a bit of a mediocre week one. Didn't want to drop them too far down the board. They go 2-1 and one this week. They go back up a spot on the board. Um, again, this team has really just got to make sure they don't allow piles of goals in during games, and they're going to be fine. They've proven that they can outscore a lot of their problems. Uh, frankly, Jack Hughes looks like the best player in the league to start the season. I mean, I, I looked at a stat the other day that I think he was sixth in all-time scoring through the first six games of the season, and the names above him were like, you know, Mario and Gretzky. So in pretty good company there, I don't expect him to keep up like 200-plus point pace, but he has been fantastic to start the year. Number five, dropping two spots from last week, is Dallas. Um, frankly, I was kind of surprised to see at the end of the week that they had dropped two spots. Um, but loss against the Leafs was kind of a tough one. Um, similar situation here. They need to make sure Ottinger can get the rest he needs so that when they make the playoffs, uh, he's got what's needed to go you know, three or four rounds. I think that's the expectation for this Dallas team, to be honest. Um, not concerned about them. Not anything really staggering that got them to fall. Uh, just a couple key, a couple teams climbing above them, to be honest. I think they're going to be fine. I don't really have any complaints about them to this point. All right, number four, moving up two spots, is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, a bit of a goalie controversy, if you want to call it that. Um, but nonetheless, the Leafs have found ways to win some games here. Uh, Ilya Samsonov struggling to start the year. Joseph Wool comes in, and he's been fantastic. So... We'll see if he completely takes over the starters crease. Obviously, they tried to throw Samsona back in last night. He played okay, but they didn't win the game, so I expect them to go back to Wool for their next game. Uh, we'll see if that is a long-term thing for them or if it's just a matter of Sammy needing to figure things out and then him retaking the starters crease. But for the time being, the Leafs seem to be rolling with Joseph Wool. Um, if he continues to play well, this team is going to be pretty scary because that's been consistently an issue for them for quite a while, their goaltending and their defense. Um, their defense is still, you know, by no means solved, but another team that can outscore a lot of their problems. And they've done that to this point with, uh, with Joseph Wool behind them. So, uh, we'll see if they move up 
any further. We'll see if Samsonov takes the crease back, if that puts them further down the list, or if they move up. Uh, number three, dropping one spot, is the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, similar story to Dallas here, despite no longer being undefeated. I don't really have them dropping because of their own performance, more so another team who has been playing fantastic passing them. So um, the abs have still been great. The addition of Ryan Johansson has been good at this point. He's got a handful of points. Um, Jonathan Druin has not had the um, success that a lot of abs fans had hoped. They were hoping, you know, that McKinnon Druin connection from junior would reignite itself. It hasn't. I think he's down on the third line now. So we'll see if he can find a steady spot on this lineup. But frankly, there's not really a lot of concerns with the abs. I think they're going to be just fine. Um, they do need to give your give some rest though. I know Francois is hurt. Um, I think they've looked at Prosvitov and Anonin for a couple of games, but ended up deciding to go with your give. They've got to give him rest again. If when they get to the playoffs, you want your goalie to be ready to roll for 20 to 25 games, right? Um, you don't want him to be completely gassed before the playoffs even start. So they do need to give him some rest. He has looked a little bit shaky his last couple of games, but they've still gotten wins and, one of two of them at least so um give give georgie some rest this abs team is going to be fine number two moving up three spots is the boston bruins um their goaltenders both have looked fantastic i think both above 925 save percentages to start the year um they're scoring just as much as they were last year pretty much uh the defense which we expected to continue to be fine has been great uh, matt poitra has been unbelievable frankly he's been the best rookie of the season to this point i don't expect that to continue to be the case but he's been really really good for the bees um and a lot of the concerns that they had coming in just haven't really shown yet we'll see if that continues again still pretty early in the season not even at 10 games but uh to this point the bruins really have no holes which is frustrating as someone who did not enjoy seeing them break the record last year but uh for now i have them too we'll see if they can continue this you know, again, terrific pace that they've had to start the year. And at number one, not moving at all, is the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, this team, much like the Bruins, has shown no holes so far. Both Thompson and Hill have been great. Uh, all their big guys have been scoring. Their depth guys have been finding the back of the net. The defense, despite missing Alex Petrangelo for a couple games, has been great. Um, still missing Zach Whitecloud, too, I believe, and really no problems at all for them. So um, Vegas, again, no cup hangover whatsoever. Um, we'll see if they eventually find a bit of a cold streak. Otherwise, I don't, this team might just never lose. I don't know. Yeah, they've, they've just looked fantastic so far. Uh, they have really the perfect situation in that they can bounce back and forth between both guys until one of them proves that he can't win a game. But up until now, that hasn't happened. So that's going to be it for this one. Let me know uh, your thoughts in the comment section down below if you think I have your team rated too high or too low. Uh, I do plan to go back to Friday's starting next week so this coming week we'll have probably only two or three games worth of movement might not be as hectic as this past week was um but yeah thanks again for watching again let me know your thoughts in the comments below subscribe if you like it is free and we will see you guys on friday thanks for watching